In this video, we're going to learn about overloading function templates in C++. So overloading function templates brings together two ideas, function overloading and function templates. Let's briefly go over these ideas first. So with function overloading, we can have two functions with the same name. So for example, we can make a function called sum that's going to accept two integers as arguments and return the sum of those two integers. We could also make a function called sum that accepts three integers as arguments, and it will return the sum of those three integers. And even though these functions have the same name, they're both allowed to exist at the same time. So for example, we could call the sum function with two arguments like this, and we could call the sum function with three arguments like this. And we should get seven and six, and we do. So really what's going on here is that we have two different functions that have the same name. And the C++ compiler can figure out which function we're calling, either the function with two arguments or the function with three arguments based on the number of arguments we supply in the function calls down here. And that's an example of function overloading. Now function templates allow us to use template parameters to create generic functions that represent a potential family of functions. And we can supply type arguments to use and create functions within that family. So for example, we could say here, template, and I'll say type name T. This is called the template prefix. And this T here is what's called a template parameter or a type variable. We would then say here, t sum t a t b, and then return a plus b. So here we've defined a function template, where t is a template parameter. And the idea is that the compiler is going to fill in t, replace t with a particular type, like int or double or float. It would have to be something that supports the addition operator but the compiler is going to replace T with a specific type and it's going to create specific versions of this function that we can call template functions as needed. So for example, down here, we'll call sum like this. We'll say sum open bracket double and then 2.0 and 3.5 followed by an end line. So we call this double keyword here a type argument, and the compiler is going to look at how we're using the function template here at compile time when it's producing the executable for our program. It's going to go out and generate a version of this function here that we call a template function using this type argument here. It's going to replace T with double, and it's as if the compiler wrote a function that looks like this for us based on how we're using the function template here with the type argument double. So that's how function templates work. And if we save and run this, we'll get a sum of 5.5. Now we don't always necessarily need to provide the type argument here. If the compiler can figure out the type argument we intend to use based on the arguments provided to our function template, we don't actually have to have the type there in angle brackets. So we can try this out. We'll save it, compile it, and then run it. And we get 5.5, the same as before. So overloading function templates basically combines the ideas of function overloading and function templates. We're going to overload our function templates. So for example, let's copy this sum function here. We'll delete both of these now. I'll paste it down here. We'll copy this template prefix and paste it here. And we're going to have two function templates with the name sum. To make this a generic function, we'll replace int with our template parameter t. And now we have two function templates. One of them has two parameters, and the other has three parameters. But they're both called sum. So we also have overloading of our function templates. Let's try these out now. So we'll leave in this call to sum with two arguments 
because it should use our function template that accepts two arguments, but we'll also put a function call with three arguments. We'll say cout sum 1.0, 1.1, and 1.4, followed by an end line. And we'll save this and run it, and both function calls will work. We'll get 5.5 and 3.5. And what's going on here is that the compiler is going to recognize which function template we're using based on the number of arguments provided. And in this case here, it's going to recognize that we're using the function template that accepts two arguments with double values. It's going to go out and create a specific version of this function template called a template function, replacing T with double. And then basically the same thing is going to happen here. The compiler is going to recognize we're using the function template that accepts three arguments. It's going to go out and create a type specific version of this function. And that function is going to be used when this function is called at execution time. Now we can also use some like this. We could use it with ints instead. We could say C out sum and we'll say one and three followed by an end line. And we could also say C out sum and we'll say one, three, five, followed by an end line. And if we save this and run it, this is going to work as well. We get four and nine. So here we've combined the benefits of function overloading with function templates, because we're using sum with different numbers of arguments and different types of arguments as well. So we've made it very flexible to use. Now we can actually continue to overload sum with non-template functions. So for example, we could say double sum and then double A, double B, and here we'll return A plus B. So this non-template function here basically looks a lot like our function template here, except it's specific to doubles. What's gonna happen in this case here? When we call sum with two double arguments, Will our function template be used or will the non-template function be used? To explore this, let's add some couts to the functions. Here we'll say cout and we'll say non-template sum followed by an inline. Then up here, we'll have a cout and we'll say template sum followed by an inline. So let's see which version runs here. We'll save it and run it. And we get non template sum. So the template sum does run here, but the non template sum runs here. We can see it here in that first line of output. So in C++, when there's ambiguity between a template function and a non template function, the non template function will take precedence. We can expect that behavior. Now, when overloading functions, it's possible to create a situation where the compiler just can't figure out which overloaded function we intend to call. That sort of ambiguity will actually cause an error. We can actually have the same problem with overloading function templates. So for example, up here, let's copy and paste this. And let's further overload some. We'll change this first parameter here int. And in this overloaded version, we're going to change the second parameter to int. Now we do have two distinct function templates here, but there's potential for ambiguity. So for example, down here, when we try to use sum with two int arguments, which of these function templates is going to be used? This one here, with int as a first argument, or this one here with int as a second argument. We'll save it and run it. And we actually get an error. It says call to sum is ambiguous. So we have to watch out for ambiguity when we have overloaded function templates as well. So this is how we can use overloaded function templates in C++ to combine the benefits of function overloading and function templates. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.